Dennis is a talented architect. He's designed a unique skyscraper, and right now, the construction works are starting. His boss asked Dennis to show around a group of specialists from a competitor company. The only condition was that they weren't allowed to take any photos. Dennis did as he was told, but when the group was going to leave, he asked security to detain one man. The architect claimed he had been taking photos during the tour around the site. How did he understand it? The man was carrying an umbrella. He kept pointing it at different objects, asking lots of questions. But the sky is cloudless. What does he need an umbrella for? A camera must be hidden there. Nathan came to his friend Zachary, who worked in a museum. Look what I've got! A priceless manuscript that was written more than a thousand years ago! Zachary looked through the manuscript and realized his friend had been fooled. Does anything in this text strike you as strange? If we talk about the dates before the Common Era, they should be in reverse order. The original text would read, King Alfred V ruled the country from 1320 to 1290 BCE. Detective Aaron Jones got a call late at night. It was his neighbor. I've heard a very loud noise coming from the house next door. I'm afraid to go there to investigate alone, but what if something has happened? When Aaron and his neighbor arrived at the place, they saw the entrance door open. They ran inside and found the house owner, Mr. Anderson, on the floor of his bedroom, tied and moaning in pain. He said he had been in bed reading a book. And then, a man in a black mask broke into his room and hit him on the head. Then he tied Mr. Anderson, took all his money and other valuables, and disappeared. Detective Jones didn't believe the man. Why? Look at his bed. There isn't even a wrinkle on the cover. It's unlikely that the thief made the bed after tying Mr. Anderson, which means the man is lying. Look at this group of people and try to figure out who the man's wife is. It's the woman in purple. Both she and the biker are wearing matching wedding rings. Joan took part in an experiment, testing her logical thinking and analytical skills. She had to crack riddles to get to the next level. Right now, the girl is locked in a small room. The door will open automatically once she figures out the riddle written on a piece of paper. Which principle is this sequence based on? 8549176320 The numbers are lined up based on the alphabetical order of the first and second letters of their name. 8, 5, 4, 9, and so on. Joan managed to get out of the room and is ready for the next task. This time, the girl needs to join all the blue points on the screen. But she's allowed to use only three lines. How can she do it? She's drawn a triangle. Its three sides include all the dots. The next level is rather scary. Joan is locked in a room that's slowly filling with water. This process will only stop when the girl figures out how this equation can be true. 29 minus 1 equals 30. Even under these stressful conditions, Joan managed to crack the puzzle. She replaced the numbers with the Roman numerals, XXIX minus I equals XXX. Then she removed the one I from 29, XXIX, and got 30, XXX. Wow, this was a riddle with a lot of excess. And finally, Joan is given the last test. She needs to figure out which object is the odd one and doesn't belong to the group. Can you do the same? It's the first object. It's the only one that doesn't have any individual traits. The second object is uniquely round. The third doesn't have a red line around it. 
the fourth shape is a different color, and the fifth one is smaller than the rest. Two cars are driving through the city. They both started their journey at the same time. The green one is moving at a speed of 30 miles per hour. The yellow one is faster, its speed is 50 miles per hour. And still, at one point, the green car comes across the yellow car. How is it possible? Well, the cars were traveling in opposite directions. Look at this teenager and two women behind his back. Who is his real teacher? The answer is in the reflection behind their backs. You can see that both women are holding pointers. But in the mirror, only one of them has it. She is the real teacher. Two men are going to fill their watering cans with water from the river. Who will bring more water? The spout of the older man's watering can is situated lower than the spout of the other man's can. And the level of water can't be higher than the spout. It means the younger man will bring more water. Evelyn wants to visit one unusual restaurant. But to get there, one must know the password. The girl hides around the corner to figure it out. She sees a man come up to the security guard. The guard says, 12. The man answers, 6, and is allowed to come in. Then a young woman approaches the security guard. He says, 6, and she answers, 3. Evelyn is sure she has figured out the pattern. She comes up to the security guard and hears him say, 4. The girl says, 2, and isn't allowed to enter. Why? The password is always different. It's the number of letters in the word the security guard says. Like the word 12 has 6 letters. That's why Evelyn should have answered 4. A manager of the most luxurious sea resort in the area called the police. She said someone had stolen a set of very expensive monogrammed bed linen. Three guests left the hotel that morning. Mr. Sam Taylor, Mrs. Amanda Martin, and Mr. Michael Smith. The police detained one of the guests and, indeed, found the bed linen in their suitcase. How did the detectives figure out which person was the thief? As you can see, the hotel's name is Morning Star. This means the monogram on the bed linen was MS. The only person with the same initials is Mr. Michael Smith. Hannah called her friend, Detective Evelyn Marks, and asked her to come as soon as possible. While the woman was away walking with her dog, someone had gotten into her house and stolen her laptop. Hannah was sure it was her neighbor, Jeremy. Evelyn went to question the man, but he wasn't at home. She decided to wait for him in her car. Soon, she saw Jeremy opening his entrance door. I went fishing early in the morning. Don't you see that I've just come home? But Hannah didn't believe Jeremy and took him to the police station. Why? The guy was wearing white sneakers, but it's been raining since early morning. If he was out fishing, how can his shoes look so clean? Detective Jacob Robinson was spending his vacation in the mountains. One morning, he found out someone had stolen a big sum of money from the owner of the hotel where he was staying. Jacob offered the man his help and questioned all the hotel guests. Emma said, I felt unwell and spent all the evening in my room. Lewis explained to the detective that he had only arrived at 2 a.m. and had gone straight to bed. And Simon said, I've got friends living here in the village. I went to visit them and returned in the morning just an hour ago. Detective Robinson immediately realized who was guilty. Do you know it? It was Simon. Look at the snow around the hotel. It looks untouched with no footprints whatsoever. Then how did Simon get back from the village? Mrs. Williamson told her daughter Maya she wasn't allowed to see her boyfriend Luke until she prepared for her exam. After that, the woman went shopping. 
When she was coming back, she spotted Luke, who was walking along the street. When Mrs. Williamson returned home, she immediately realized Maya had seen her boyfriend. How did the woman figure it out? When she was leaving, there were five roses in the vase on the kitchen table. Now, there were only four. And when she saw Luke, he was carrying a rose. Private detective Sean was waiting for his client in the lobby of a large hotel. The client was running very late. That's why, to entertain himself, Sean was observing the hotel guests. He noticed a man at the reception desk. He had four suitcases, but refused when the porter offered to help him with the baggage. The man went to his room, only to reappear five minutes later with the largest of his suitcases. Half an hour later, he returned without the suitcase and went to his room. Soon, he rushed to the reception shouting, My suitcases! They're gone! Sean introduced himself and, together with the hotel management, joined the man in his room. Something seemed off about the guy, and soon, the detective realized he was a fraudster. What did the man do? Each of his suitcases was smaller than the previous one. The man packed all of them into the largest suitcase and left with it. And then, he pretended someone had stolen his things. Detective Taylor was chasing a dangerous criminal. Suddenly, the man entered a hospital. But there are hundreds of rooms there. Luckily, it was raining, and the criminal left footprints on the floor. The detective followed them and got into a small room. There were three people there. All of them were covered in bandages from head to toe. But one of them was a fake patient. Who? It's the man in the middle. He doesn't have a medical chart next to his bed.